Welcome! I'm Yuan Nielsen. And I'm Lincoln Murphy. And this is Impact Weekly. We're here to help you make your customers successful. Each week, we answer your most pressing customer success management questions by relying on our years of experience with companies around the world. Let's get this going. Hey everyone, so time for Impact Weekly. This question is actually a little bit more from a leadership point of view, uh, but I think there's a lot in here for anyone working in customer success as well. So here it goes. As head of customer success, I have always been very integrated with my small team and could see the progress we made with customers. As we are now growing, I feel I'm losing touch with my team and my customers. Any advice for me? Okay. Interesting one. And I think anyone growing can probably relate to this. But uh, as always, I think there's a lot in here that we could go deeper in and uh, try to help this person. Basically, As I always like to do, I read between the lines or try to figure out what's going on behind the question. And uh, having worked with lots of heads of customer success in growing yeah. teams, I can feel some yeah. some of the things that are going on here. It's always great to have a small team because you can be close to the team. You can you can be close to your customers. Right. But I know that and we're going to talk about this in a lot of detail. That's actually quite limiting. It has a lot of downside. There's a lot of mm-hmm. negative stuff that that comes from that. But what I'm what I'm sensing here is yeah. A situation where somebody doesn't want to give up the the level of control that they have. Right. Yeah. I know this person. I met this person. I think this is, I see this uh, a lot as well. And I think, as you say, it's it's reading between the lines or interpreting the question. I think this is someone that's really passionate probably about the customers, maybe been in the company from the start, have hired this team of customer success managers. This may even be a situation where persons may have actually started out as a CSM and moved into yeah. this managerial role so that they, they have a lot of connection to the customers. They have something drawing them back into just doing the work. And yeah. you mentioned that this is somebody that, that cares. Right. And I think you, that, that comes through in that question. But one thing that caring... <laughs> can do is get you in trouble, at least when it comes to scaling mm-hmm. and all of that. And I think what we need to do is decouple yeah. this idea of caring from, let's say, micromanagement or heavy in- involvement in the, in, in the day-to-day operation yeah. from what the customer success managers are doing. I'm not saying stop caring at mm-hmm. all. Please don't misinterpret that. I want you to care. I want you to just use that care that you have in a much more efficient way. Caring is not coming in and doing the work when your CSMs are overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Caring is not micromanagement. Caring is not Mm -hmm. being second tier CSM Mm -hmm. there for escalations and, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. I think if you can decouple those things, then that will help you actually come up out of the weeds, out of the minutia and start looking at things the right way. But if you, if those things are tightly coupled in your mind, then you are going to think if I stop doing those things, it means I don't care. Yeah. And that's just not true. So I think that's one thing that I see, especially people that are passionate about stuff, especially in customer success. We see that a lot. Yeah. And this person is probably great with customers uh, and so on. But but I think you're both like the savior here. You're trying to do cover for your customer success matters, being all these meetings with the customers. But you also have to realize you are actually also a bottleneck right now because you need to grow. And I think that's the the problem to address here as well. How can we keep growing, keep doing the great job we're doing with the customers? You don't have to be in the middle of it. One thing that I see heads of customer success dealing with, especially in this situation, Mm. is just an enormous amount of stress. And we often talk about CSMs being stressed out, overworked, overcapacity. And that's, of course, true. 
But what doesn't get talked about enough, I think, is heads of customer success that mm. are also in that same uh, situation. And in a situation like this, that's laid out in the question where it's, I've been part of this small team and now we're growing, the stress of taking on a lot of the work to fill those gaps, to be there, to help the CSMs do what they need to do, that stress is now compounded by the stress of trying to figure out how do I get out of the situation or how yeah. do we scale? I think what you mentioned there also, if you've been like a CSM, been doing the customer success manager job, and then you've been promoted to head of customer success, it's very easy that you still want to do the customer success manager work because that's the real work uh, where you work with the customer and you drive progress with the customers. But this is also a key part here is to take this step back and become the manager and the leader and so on. Um, and I think we can sense that from the question as well. Which kind of goes back to this idea of just getting out of your own way. I think uh, sometimes we need to know that we are where we are, uh, but now we need to plan for the next step for the company, for the team, for the organization. And we can't keep doing what we have been doing to get there. Basically, What got you here won't get you there. But look, it's really, it's easy to say this, like we need to be thinking about this, but if you're already in this situation, oh, it's yeah, okay, yeah. what do I do? The best time to think about this stuff is earlier, <laughs> in the past sometime. If you yeah. can't go back in time, if you haven't figured out how to do that, then we need to be thinking about this stuff right now. For those of you in a situation where you're not currently being met with a need to scale, you're not mm. necessarily growing right now, now's the time to be thinking about this stuff. So that what we're going to yes. talk about now about how to be thinking about this, what a solution might be. If you're not feeling the pressure to scale, you're not having to deal with this stuff, you could just rest and then wait until it's too late, or you could start thinking about this stuff now. If you're already in this situation, it's never too late, but you want to really start thinking about this now. And so hopefully what we're going to talk about here can, can help you. Yeah. And I think we, we can talk about this in general, but we can also link this to our Heads of Customer Success program because I think we have some really mm -hmm. good structure there to, to help people. And we can mention a few things now, but of course there is the whole program to, to sign up for if you want to, to start working on this. So there, but there, we can't cover everything here, but let's bring up a few things that we recommend this person or anyone in this situation to yeah, look into basically. Sure. So... The way that we talk about things in, in Impact Academy, and this all comes from our work with companies around the world, we basically talk about three different aspects of being ahead of customer success, and that is leadership, management, and coaching. And then right. we stack in there also just this idea of operations, which is going to mm -hmm. come from all of those things I just mentioned. Yeah. And what this, if we break this down, as you're looking to scale, because that's really what we're talking about here, there's basically five things we need to think about. People. People are at the core. So your team right. is at the core of everything we do. Those people are going to be made more efficient through systems, right? Yep. So the software systems that we use, processes, which are the, the workflows and playbooks and everything that we use that are generally housed in or powered by the systems. Yeah. And then of course the metrics, mm. how do we know if we're making the progress that we need to be making? And then one that, that is often overlooked mm. and that, that's culture. Yes. So when we talk about people that usually fits into coaching, none of this exists in a vacuum though, but people were, we're usually talking about coaching systems, operations, processes, that's operations, but also management. And metrics are going to be under management. And then culture is something that you build through leadership. So you can see all of these things are really, this is what you need to come up with as head of customer success. As head of customer success, you are a leader, you yeah. are a manager, and you are a coach. Yes. And if we like... Where does one start here? If we're in the situation of the person asking the question, I think yes. one, one way to look at this, of course, is through the life cycle stages here, what, what needs to happen? 
what am I doing or what, first of all, what am I doing, but what do my team needs to do there? And uh, can we identify some progress milestones through these stages? Uh, I think that's one way to map it out. What do need, what needs to be happening, right? As a smaller team, very often we know these things inherently. We know what the life cycle stages are. We have some idea of the progress milestones that our customers need to go through and that our CSMs need to work our customers through in order to be successful. We have some ideas around joint accountability. The thing that is usually missing is some type of formalization around that. So yes. We know these things, but we don't document them. We know these things, but we don't really build processes around them. We know mm. these things, but we don't really have systems in place to ensure that they're happening consistently. Yes. So we need to make sure that we're very clear on the discrete life cycle stages of you know, mm. what those are, onboarding, different stages of adoption, ongoing engagement, and we need to understand the progress milestones, customer going from point A to point B, what those are, what the joint mm. accountability is, what customers are going to have to do on their own outside of the product, what they'll do on their own inside of the product, what they'll do with the CSM in the product and what we'll do for them behind the scenes. Mm. And we have to lay all of that out and get very clear yes. on that so that we can start actually operationalizing, having those systems and processes and metrics in place to be able to see, are, we, are our customers making the progress that they need to be making and are our CSMs doing what they need to do in order to make the customer successful? That stuff has to be in place. To do that as head of customer success, you cannot be doing the daily work of a CSM or yeah. filling in the gaps for the CSM and also do this. You need to be able to take that step back. You need to be able to look at things from a higher level and, and put yeah. all of that in place. And when you have that map, and, it, that's, and, and this is something we don't want to make that too big of an exercise, right? You, that, it's also progress where you have to start with the most important things to get them uh, up there and, and um, get the clarity on that. But then this evolves as you grow, as you add more customers, as you add more to your platform and so on. So it's better to get going here and get something up and going rather than trying to do the perfect plan or the perfect map of this. Yeah, I think what you just said there is absolutely critical, needs to be reiterated. I'll say it in just a little bit different way. There is no perfect. Perfect doesn't exist, which means you just have to take action. To your point, like, okay, so could you sit down and come up with the really intricate life cycle stage layout? Sure. Or you could just say, what's onboarding? Let's get really clear on what onboarding is. Let's get really clear on when a customer exits onboarding. What does that look like? When can I flip the bit in our system to say that customer is now on board? And then what are the progress milestones to go from when they sign up or the kickoff call yep. to the point where they are on board. All right. Yes. Now we know that life cycle stage. We know what it's going to take to get them from point A to point B. And then how many person hours is, it, is going to be required to move them through that life cycle mm. stage? So now I have some idea of, of how many, if I talk to sales and I know we're going to be bringing in this many customers at this quarter. I know that it takes this many person hours to onboard a new customer. I know I have this many CSMs and I know that we're not going to be able to do that because my CSMs will be completely overwhelmed. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. Or everything will be just fine. We have total, we totally have enough capacity. Yes. Rarely, rarely the truth, right? <laughs> yeah. That's probably not going to be the case, but that may also be an indicator that, Hey, this yeah. might be a good time to, to carve this out and have an onboarding specialist. Exactly. The point is. You need to do that, but start with something. Onboarding is one of those life cycle stages where it's fairly structured. Mm. It's a lot more about us than them. We still need to make it seem like it's about them so they'll stay involved, but it's, we know a lot more about what needs to happen because it's usually much more functional and technical, just getting everything stood up. And so we know a lot about it. So that's a great life cycle stage to start with. As you move into adoption, you start getting your customers to use more of the functionality aligned with their use cases, mm -hmm. that becomes more complex, okay? So start with something 
simpler, like onboarding, do yeah. this and then move into the more complex life cycle stages. But once you start doing this and, mm. and you go through onboarding and then you do the different adoption stages and then you start doing this for, maybe you do this for renewal. What is What does renewal look like? We have to go through these steps. So what are the person hours for renewal? What are the progress milestones for renewal? Same thing for expansion or whatever. Mm. You start doing mm. that. You're going to just have more control. You're going to see, you're going to understand what it takes for the customer to move through that life cycle stage. And you're going to understand what it takes for the CSM to get the customer to move through that life cycle stage. Yeah. Now you can pay attention to those things. This will actually give you a lot more visibility and control into what your CSMs are doing and how successful your customers are. But yeah, if you try to do everything at once, you're never going to do anything. And if you try to no. strive for perfection, you're going to fail because there is no perfect. No. So to your point, Johan, start somewhere. Start yeah. small and make and just, progress. To put it in perspective, we do this during the, the three-week uh, program we have for Heads of Customer Success at the Impact Academies. And that's uh, just, is it six hours in total or so that you <laughs> actually spend uh, here? So it's... Yeah, we, we want to just make the scope the right here because, the, as you say also, Lincoln, you, you can really overwork this and it becomes like this paper product that doesn't really help anyone. I think the key point here is to map it out and make it something really useful here and now and then evolve it. Basically, We just have to try to get a better idea of really just what it's going to take for our customers to be successful, what it's going to take for the CSMs or other maybe onboarding specialists or whatever to make the customer successful. And then we, we have the systems and processes in place to, to look at that and say, all right, it looks like my team is moving in the right direction. I have some CSMs that seem to be really excelling at this and doing quite well. Mm -hmm. And I can also look at this and say, I have some CSMs that are maybe struggling that, that maybe it almost looks like they're going through the motions, but I'm not seeing the customers make the progress that they need, they need to make. I'm not seeing the CSMs mm -hmm. make the progress that they need to make. So now that becomes a coaching opportunity, right? Exactly. So I'm using my management skills to look at all of that. And then mm -hmm. I'm going to switch into coaching mode to help bring those CSMs that are maybe struggling to yeah. bring them up to speed. Yeah. This is such a huge point there because the first part, if you have that, what's expected, what we need to do basically through the life cycle stages, then it's much easier to understand, do my team now have the competence and the confidence to actually do this? Because I think also from the question, you can almost sense that this person is maybe also not really letting go because they're managing the customer. Yeah. And so I think when you have done step one here, what we said, the second part is crucial as well to look at the team as well. If you can say, look, my team has the confidence and the competence, then that is a point where you can take a step back and mm. work on other aspects of, of your business. Mm. If you can't say yes to either of those, then that's where you identify those gaps and, and you figure out how to solve for those. And, and then you get to a point where you can move forward. I think one of the things that I see very often and what we, frankly, what happens quite a bit in Impact Academy and in our head of customer success training mm. is we work through this and we work through these scenarios real life scenarios where, you know, we want you to work on this and apply it to your business during our time mm -hmm. together. And what we find is a lot of people come back and say, I did some of this analysis. We looked at the life cycles stages. I did some capacity planning with, you know, at least what I could do in, you know, in the time that I had here. And there's a lot I don't know. There are a lot of places that... Mm. I don't know what has to happen in order for my customer to be successful. And I feel bad about it. And we say, no, don't feel bad. This is a result. When you do this analysis, you are going to come up with gaps. Yeah. You are going to find areas that need improvement. That's awesome. That's the whole point of doing this so that we can figure out how to fill those gaps, how to restructure things and, and how to achieve more capacity, whether that's bringing on more, more team members or moving more things to async or whatever, like mm -hmm. this is all a result. And so when you do this exercise, 
either on your own or if you come to Impact Academy, you will find things that will surprise you that you yeah. didn't know. And now they're right there in front of you and you can't ignore them. But that's great because yeah. now we can start putting things in the, into place that are going to get us past that. Yeah. When your team was smaller, or maybe even right now, you're probably the one filling those gaps. Yeah. And that has to stop or you'll right. never scale. Going back to what you said, Johan, they become the bottleneck. The head of customer success is the bottleneck there. So let's wrap this up. So basically our three recommendations here to unbottleneck yourself, basically. And the first one here, it's leadership. And I think you need to set the culture and get out of this hustling grit to move into this more clear structure that is sustainable as you add more people to the team. And from there, we, we go to the management aspect, which is we want to create an operation plan with metrics based around life cycle stages, capacity planning, and progress milestones. And the last part here is the coaching part, which is basically you need to move into a role where you help your CSM uh, work through the process uh, and not do it by yourself. So coach your team to do it. Uh, coach your team to be successful. But those are the three. Thanks, everyone, for joining today. And we will soon be back with another episode. Hey, thanks for listening. Do you want to bring your customer success to the next level? Check out Impact Academy. We have training programs for customer success managers and for leaders in customer success.